Welcome to SOS Media, your number one source of the latest news, opinions, and in-depth investigations that dig deeper into today's developing stories around the globe. It's not uncommon for people to appreciate the artistic work of someone they may personally dislike or disagree with. Music, like other forms of art can be appreciated for its emotional impact, creativity and technical skill, regardless of the artist's personality or personal beliefs. However, there are a few possible reasons why someone might love the music of a musician they may feel uncomfortable to associate with in public. People can love the music of a musician they dislike or are uncomfortable with due to reasons like separating the art from the artist, emotional connection to the music, admiration for musical talent, nostalgia, or having diverse taste. Musical appreciation is subjective, and personal feelings about the artist may not necessarily affect one's enjoyment of their music. Born on October 14, 1967, Stephen Anthony Smith is an American sports television personality, sports radio host and sports journalist. He makes frequent appearances as an NBA analyst for ESPN on Sports Center, NBA Countdown and the network's NBA broadcasts. He has also hosted the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio and is a commentator on ESPN's First Take, where he appears with Molly Karam. Smith is a featured columnist for ESPN and the Philadelphia Inquirer. Now, Stephen A. Smith used his podcast, the Stephen A. Smith Show to make a bizarre statement about the incarcerated king of R&B R. Kelly. While debating a tweet that simply read best song for intimate ones, Smith immediately thought of R. Kelly. I don't want to bring up R. Kelly, but I think it's okay now because he's in jail, Smith said in a widely disseminated clip. Furthermore, the clip has widely been met with shock that Smith, a widely respected pundit with a national TV spot would say something so out of pocket unprovoked. But I believe that is the love and respect he has for R. Kelly. He should have found it quite very difficult to run away from R. Kelly and later on from his amazing music. The viral moment was part of a larger three-minute answer that Smith gave. His answers included Spandau Ballet's True, The Jackson 5's All I Do Is Think Of You, and Luther Vandross A House Is Not A Home. In regards to R. Kelly, Smith's pick was, dedicated and after the viral clip, he reasoned that he wouldn't have brought it up if R. Kelly was still out there, getting away with stuff. Truly speaking, this could be a sign of stigmatization some weak souls are grumping with whenever the name R. Kelly gets into the public context. Interestingly however, Smith does go on to name at least three other R. Kelly songs as part of his answer. Furthermore, Smith argues that we can't argue that there's quite a few R. Kelly songs that would make an objective list in answer to the question, he asserted. But in the end, musical taste is highly subjective and individuals can have complex relationships with the art and artists they enjoy. It's a personal choice whether to let personal feelings about an artist influence one's enjoyment of their music. When someone loves the music of a musician they dislike or pretend not to like because of what others think about him, they can choose to separate the art from the artist, explore similar artists, understand the context of the artist's background, acknowledge complexity, enjoy the music privately, or engage in dialogue with others who share similar feelings. The ultimate key is to navigate the situation in a way that aligns with personal values and emotional well-being. However, fans have of recent notice that Smith has been getting increasingly out of pocket over the last year or so. One particularly egregious example was when Smith appeared to reveal obtaining illegal information to continue a beef with Lonzo Ball. Despite this, Perhaps Smith's most out-of-pocket statement in recent months was about Kim Kardashian. In July Smith tweeted is Kim Kardashian a prostitute? Is Kris Jenner a pimp? Understandable, Smith got a lot of heat for the tweet. However, one of the loudest voices or at least one of the voices Smith paid attention to, was that of Patrick Beverly. The newly signed Sixer called Smith out on the tweet. Not cool she has kids and should not be the tittle or topic. Smith's tweet was later deleted as he went into damage control mode. Clerical error bro and you are absolutely right, Smith tweeted back. That is being corrected right now as we speak and for the record, I don't think of Kim Kardashian that way nor would I ever speak of her or any woman that way, which I've stated. That's for checking that issue, Smith tweeted in response to Beverly's call out. 
The phrase of clerical error absolutely sent people on Twitter mocking the veteran broadcaster for his bizarre phrasing and excuse making. I would never speak of a woman that way right after he quite literally did his peak first take energy, noted one commenter. But we still know that Smith is known for his frequent use of catchphrases while hosting first take, such as blasphemous when describing something completely outrageous that does not make sense to him. He also frequently refers to former Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers as a bad man, with the A stretched out for several seconds. On the other hand, Smith has worn Rodgers' jersey on two occasions on first take in 2017, once following the Dallas Cowboys elimination at the hands of the Packers, and once during a special taping of first take from Dallas where he received booze from the live crowd. According to Jackson Denzel, R. Kelly as an artist has been widely recognized for his musical talent, particularly in the realms of Rand B and Soul. He has produced numerous hit songs and albums over the years showcasing his skills as a singer, songwriter and producer. Many people have enjoyed his music for its catchy melodies, emotional depth and smooth vocal delivery. I enjoy his music so much and no one should ever suggest to me otherwise, Denzel asserted. Meanwhile, we all know that R. Kelly has appealed his New York and Illinois convictions. In the appeal, his attorneys claim that four jurors have since admitted to having decided his guilt before the official verdict, and that at least two of them watched the Lifetime docuseries Surviving R. Kelly. They also claim that some of the young girls R. Kelly was accused of abusing were 18 years old when their intimate relationship started and that evidence related to previous relationships and testimony from former employees should not have been admissible. R. Kelly is seeking for a reversal of his conviction or a new trial. R. Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison last June after his September 2021 conviction in federal court in Brooklyn, New York. Earlier this year, R. Kelly's abuse indictments in Illinois were dropped, with Illinois State's attorney Kim Fox citing the extensive sentences handed down in the R. Kelly's federal case in New York. He was also sentenced to 20 years in prison in a separate federal Chicago case and he's otherwise expected to serve most of that time concurrent to his 30-year sentence for the trafficking sentence in New York. But, we are aware that R. Kelly through his lawyer Jennifer Bonjean appealed both the New York and the Illinois cases and proceedings are underway. Last month, the government asked for yet another 30-day extension of time to and inclusive of 30th of November 2023 for it to submit its reply brief. We the supporters of R. Kelly remain very optimistic that, with Bonjean's exposure of the misinterpretations of the law, lies and the flaws that have marred R. Kelly's cases, and her undisputed experience in handling appellant cases, it is just a matter of time that R. Kelly will eventually enjoy his freedom again. Thank you for watching today's video brought to you by SOS Media. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our videos. Also remember to leave your comment about today's topic in the comment section below.